Alright, going to be doing probably one of the more anticipated sleeper videos. We are going to be doing quarterbacks. Yes. So, New England Patriots 2024 NFL Draft Target Sleepers QBs. Well, I haven't really updated my top QBs yet. But I recently watched some additional tape on some of these sleeper QBs for the New England Patriots in the 2024 NFL Draft Cycle. Yes, we are aware the Patriots probably should address the QB position near the top half of the draft this year. Now, my top guys are going to be Drake May, followed by Daniels, then Caleb. After that, I have Penix, McCarthy, Nix, and then Pratt. Those guys are probably day two picks. But also, the Patriots might need to bring in some additional help in the late rounds or possibly UDFA to bring in some additional depth and fill some practice squad needs. Of course, there's always the possibility that the Patriots are considering waiting on a franchise QB on day one or day two and are looking zappy or a free agent. So the guys on this list are either undervalued, underrated, overlooked, under the radar, or what you would say a very deep cut diamond that could be considered a viable option if they're not on this list. However, these guys are interesting and could be viable options for the Patriots either for the 53 or just the practice squad. First, we have Jordan Travis from FSU, 6'1", 212. His injury has prevented him from participating in a lot of the pre-draft process thus far, so he is flying under the radar for a lot of fans right now. But if you watch college football, he was in the running for a lot of awards, potentially Heisman, and was leading his team to the college playoffs before the injury. Now, before the season even started, I had him as a top five quarterback. And his stats are solid. Now, this year he went 207 out of 324. He had 2,755 yards, 20 TDs, 2 INTs, okay? On the ground, 176 yards for 7 touchdowns. Now, he is a creator. He's able to employ his running threat with devastating burst, twitch, and lateral agility. He's very athletic. Travis can extend plays to the last second and just find ways to succeed. He has enough arm strength to generate velocity in short range, and he also stays on schedule. His arm is exceptionally elastic and can throw from a variety of angles. He's adept at boundary fades and corner routes. Just has that knack for it. He appears to be a very strong competitor and hasn't collapsed under high pressure situations. Now for the downside, his arm strength is about average, so it can be limiting at times. I know we talk about this a lot, but arm strength is not always about distance. He can throw a deep ball, but it's really about the velocity, right? Which he doesn't really carry the ball well to that what we call deep third, right? So what we, I have a problem with Mac. Mac can throw a deep ball, but he has to throw it up there like a kite. It's getting deep fast where the opportunity is there. When the guy makes the break and you get the ball in stride, he doesn't have to make any adjustments. Get the ball to the guy fast while he's running, right? So he's able to maintain separation. Also, his anticipation needs to improve on those short routes. He needs to take advantage of the quick hits. Now, his frame is a concern. He is small, he is thin, and he also had that severe ankle injury, which could fuel questions about his sustainability as a mobile quarterback and also just his durability at the NFL level. He will be a 24-year-old rookie in 2024, which isn't always a bad thing for a quarterback, right? You want to get those reps in, but it does hint he's kind of getting close to his ceiling. Also, how long he can maintain his dual threat ability at the NFL level. I see Travis as a fourth rounder, maybe even a third if teams are getting some positive news about his rehab and his return to play schedule. Now for the Patriots, Travis is probably the best option as an early day three pick along with maybe like Joe Milton or the next guy, Jason Bean from Kansas. He's 6'3", 220. He got a shot when Jalen Daniels went out with a back injury, leaving a notable impact with his depth passing and playmaking abilities. Another creator. He completed 124 out of 199 attempts, which is around 62% percentage, 2,130 yards, which is 10.7 yards per attempt, 18 TDs, 7 intercep interceptions. Meanwhile, on the ground, 280 yards and 3 scores, and 3 TDs. Now, there is some room for improvement in honing in the consistency of his operational skills. The guy just got a shot, but when he went in there, he performed. His unwavering competitive spirit is evident on the tape. You don't have to have an interview with the guy. You can see it. He wants to win, which makes him a promising candidate for backup role. 
His physical stature further enhances his allure as he stands out as an elite creator capable of being a genuine rushing threat for any offense. Impressively, Bean excels in invading pressure and creating secondary throwing opportunities. You think he's going to be sacked, but he gets away. Then you think he's going to just tuck and run, but then at the last second, he just rips off a 20-yarder. He does this at a remarkably high level. It's worth noting that he possesses a reliable baseline arm talent and doesn't overly depend on his natural gifts. He does throw the ball well out of the pocket, further solidifying his potential as an actual quarterback at the professional level. Again, I still think he's a day three guy, making him an intriguing option within this year's draft class. But I also think there's a credible pathway for him to establish himself as a, as a valuable backup, but could develop into a legitimate starter at some point in his NFL career. At the minimum, he could be a great dual threat QB simulator on the practice squad and also develop him at multiple positions. Once he's at his pro day, I think we see him in the 4-4s four for his 40. Next is Devin Leary from Kentucky. He's an NC State transfer, but he's had some great flashes over the years. He's 6'1", 217. Last year, 209 out of 371. Tooth attribute is probably his pre-snap recognition which translates into quick and composed decisions after the snap. Something you want to see from an NFL quarterback. He's got ample arm talent, nice catchable ball, and he also leads the receivers upfield beyond the coverage. Now, also, while not being an elite athlete, he does display unexpected evasive abilities in challenging situations. He does come out and he is able to scramble. On the downside, he exhibits below average velocity on the ball. So, tar again, so again targeting that deep third probably will be an issue coupled with his limitation just overall arm strength plus extensive injury as that QB that is a lot better than his stats portray however I don't have any specific traits that indicate he's going to have immense upside potential at the NFL level I see him as that seventh round pick for the Patriots to secure a solid backup quarterback next Garrett Schrader Syracuse 6'4 225 freaky athlete a stat line is interesting before his injury, he went 134 out of 214, so roughly 63% completion percentage for 1,686 yards. He had 13 touchdowns, 6 INTs. Now for rushing, nearly 500 yards, 8 rushing touchdowns. And he also caught a few passes in there. So he's a freak athlete that can play a variety of positions. Keep that in mind. Now, of course, based on those stats, he's a competent running threat. He possesses commendable speed and toughness that complement his size effectively. He's a big dude. He does showcase flashes of impressive explosiveness when accelerating open spaces. He can eat up yards. His play strength enables him to resist solo tackle attempts. You're going to need a big dude to bring this guy down. He just stays on his feet during challenging situations. He can shrug off sacks. Now, as a quarterback, he does show some progression skills and adeptly navigating to the boundary to the seam. He has that ability. However, it's important to acknowledge certain weaknesses in his game. Notably, he doesn't have great arm strength. Plus, he went out with a shoulder injury, which required surgery, so we don't know how that's going to come back. Another thing is his footwork. He does have scissor feet on his drop, and an occasional oversized throwing motion can be observed. Additionally, the prospect will also enter the league as a 24-year-old rookie and coming off a serious shoulder injury, so we're not even sure if he'll be ready for camp. But overall, Garrett is an interesting prospect for the Patriots. He's a remarkable athlete that should run the four sixes at 6'4", 225. So he could be a great developmental guy if his shoulder comes back. I wouldn't, also, I wouldn't mind seeing him on the practice squad to simulate evasive QBs. Next, Casey Bauman, Augustana, 6'7", 225, transfer from Montana State. He's a deep cut developmental guy with an elite build and athleticism. Stat line is loaded, 216 completions out of 341, 2,878 yards, 29 touchdowns, 9 INTs, 63 percentage there, okay? 181 attempts on the ground, 572 yards, and 6 TDs. The big thing there is going back to that 6'7", 225. He has an imposing stature that complements respectable pocket passing skills and dual threat athleticism, rendering him as an unpredictable force on each play provided play callers actually use him correctly. While he exhibits finesse within the pocket, his, his improvisational prowess is underrated. Equipped with arm and vision to execute a myriad of throws and creative explosive plays, but 
we also need to accept that Bauman does face some concerns. It seems that pressure appears to have a significant impact on his decision making and accuracy. Admittedly, it's not easy to find Augustana tapes from 2023, but from what I see, there is definitely room for improvement in processing options against the Blitz, also hinting at occasional struggles. Now, despite these problems, Bauman operates smoothly. Backed by extensive experience at the position, his, his body of work at the stat line should provide the NFL with enough understanding that this guy has upside potential. With an exceptionally high ceiling from his physical attributes, Bauman could be one of the best sleepers in the entire draft. And I'm not just talking at the QB position, I'm talking overall. Casey is probably my favorite deep cut guy at the QB position this draft. He's big, he's fast, he's athletic, good arm, all the tools needed to play at the NFL level. He just needs some coaching and development to get him there. I would see him as a high priority UDFA if you're looking for a potential home run. Now, Rocky Lombardi, Northern Iowa, 6'3", 223, Michigan State transfer that has kind of struggled to find momentum. He went 189 out of 327, 2,274 yards, 11 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. On the ground, he punched in 7 touchdowns. Again, a former Michigan State transfer who is well-rounded and has the physical attributes to play at the next level. He's got good touch, catchable ball, and he's able to traverse the pocket very well. And he also has a pretty quick release. Concerns, injuries, and inconsistency. He's a promising prospect, but he just didn't get that shot at Michigan State and really hasn't got that grip that one would expect after transferring. But overall, Rocky throws a great ball and is better than advertised. However... I would say he would be a solid UDFA guy, possibly a camp invite. After that, Davius Richard, NC Central, 6'3", 220, 166 out of 273, 2,177 yards, 21 touchdowns, 4 INTs on the ground, 630 yards, 18 TDs. Now, Davius possesses a commendable skill set and notable strengths that make him a promising prospect. He has dynamic running prowess and adept decision making and option plays and obviously has a composed leadership qualities that make him particularly intriguing. Nevertheless, there are areas that could benefit from improvements such as honing his mechanics, broadening his field of vision, and enhancing his accuracy. He's got some things that are great, but there's some things that are going to be need to be worked on if he wants to be an NFL quarterback. With ongoing development and targeted efforts to address these areas, Richard has the potential to evolve into a proficient quarterback at the next level. The athleticism could make him a great dual threat simulator on the practice squad, but shouldn't be neglected as a developmental guy that could be a great backup to an athletic QB. Next, Kaysom Hill from Rhode Island, 6'2", 235, 221 out of 373, 3,074 yards, 18 touchdowns, 10 INTs. Now he has a robust muscular frame, providing a solid foundation for his performance, but also with a strong, innate arm strength. He also has effective hip snap, which makes him a fairly accurate thrower, fitting them seamlessly into tight windows characteristic of an NFL quarterback. Particularly noteworthy is his ability to deliver precise strikes across the field when operating from a well-protected pocket. However, Hill faced significant challenges in this recent season that is attributed to his protection. The consequences were evident as he consistently found himself under duress, either succumbing to sacks or enduring hard hits. Notably, his accuracy suffered a decline, particularly on intermediate and deep throws. To elevate his game, there is a clear need for him to expedite his pace of reads, enhancing his overall decision making in critical moments. I see Hill as a UDFA to help fill a potential practice squad spot. All right, next, Kate Peterson, Grand Valley State, 6'4", 223. 151 out of 241, 2,116 yards, 20 TDs, 8 INTs. On the ground, he punched it in six times. All right, so Cade has excelled in maximizing potential of his skill positions around him. He's achieved a lot with fewer resources. He definitely elevates the guys around him. He has demonstrated a swift decision-making process when progressing through the plays, displaying an early recognition of deep ball opportunities and delicately placing throws on target. Pearson showcased adaptability by adjusting to his pre-stat plan in response to blitzes, capitalizing on hot reads opportunities. He does show some NFL instincts there. His pocket presence is solid. It was marked by consistent footwork, aligning with the movement of his head. Furthermore, Peterson employed a fastball judiciously, 
typically favoring a more nuanced touch in his throws. Notably, he exhibited courage by holding his ground in the pocket and releasing throws even in the face of imminent pressure and hits. As a capable athlete, Cade possessed scrambling ability, effectively moving the chains when needed. However, it is important to note, obviously there's some weaknesses in his profile. Lower body is very thin, potentially affecting his overall strength and durability. Additionally, there is a tendency to delay the release of the ball by throwing in an extra step on occasion, impacting the timing of his throws. Cade is another guy that should be considered as a developmental QB that has potential upside. I think he would be an interesting UDFA pickup or a camp invite. All right, last we have Gage Porter, South Nazarene, 122 out of 227 passing, 1,864 yards, 10 TDs, 12 INTs, but 1,998 yards on the ground, 28 rushing touchdowns. Plus, he caught a few passes. He is an undersized QB at 5'11, 225, which makes him great as a running back. But he has that rare playmaking talent that could force general managers to reassess his designation as a quarterback, but rather just as an athlete. Or maybe they just say he's a pure running back. But you also have to consider him as somebody who can actually pass the ball at the NFL level. But like any quarterback, Porter will have to prove he can recognize the sky's coverages and work on time. Most likely a running back at the next level, but he could be useful as a practice squad member for a team that's doing a lot of roster reconfiguration. Porter is an electric talent with a live arm. It appears he has good mental makeup and the skill set that brings some versatility to the field. I really like Gage as a great practice squad guy and a depth piece for the Patriots at the running back position. He would be probably a UDFA or a camp invite though. Now, before you get all these guys are bums and, you know, just disregarding them, I am simply just pointing out some guys the Patriots could consider if they don't go QB on day one or two or they do commit to a QB in the first or second day, but are looking for some depth, or they just need a practice squad simulator to run the scout team. Plus, we have to consider that the Patriots are starting over, and we don't have any concrete convictions on what they're going to do at the QB position. We don't know if they're bringing in a free agent. One of the, guy, one of the top three guys at the QB position, we don't know if they want to go day two. Maybe they just punt to next year and they pick somebody up in the day three. We don't know. So we have to look at everything. But most importantly, these videos are, is about giving you evidence that there are other guys out there that you can grab. There are guys you can call up, quote unquote, on day four to bring in, see what they can do. If they don't make it, you cut them, whatever. Maybe some guys you bring in in camp invites, you know, rookie camp invite, coming in for the year, bring them in for workouts, names that you can possibly hear over the course of the preseason that might do something for the Patriots. And again, these guys are redoing everything. Reminder. A lot of these guys I'm pointing out, they're athletes. These are the guys that could do multiple positions for you. Just like how the Patriots have done in years past, they're probably going to have to do again. Quarterbacks that have a firm understanding about how it is to run an offense. They have physical attributes to develop into other positions. Right? Having them on your roster can check off multiple boxes. Right? So they give you depth in multiple positions. These are the type of guys the Patriots have liked to use, and they're going to have to use again. The Patriots are dealing with roster capitulation coming off Pelichek, and they're trying to rebuild, but without getting rid of everyone. So they're going to have to pick a few guys they're going to have to get rid of. They don't want to just simply replace them. So maybe some of these guys can come in. They can be a running back, they can be a wide receiver, they can be a quarterback. And if something goes down, these guys are there for you. Plus, they're there to be a good solid practice squad simulator for another team. And maybe they do develop into something. Maybe they do develop in your backup QB or QB3 at some point. There's obviously other names to look at. Um, there's Theo Day from NIU. There's Michael Ayers from Sanford. There's Braden Gleason from Emporia State. That guy has over 8,000 yards in three seasons with 85 passing TDs and only 14 INTs. Plus, he's a dual threat and he's even a punter. Uh, there's Colby Sweets from HCU. Um... Spencer Rattler wouldn't be a bad day three guy. If the Patriots go with a free agent, maybe you can pick him up like in the fifth or sixth. Uh, Hartman might be like a seventh round, maybe UDFA guy. Uh, Joe Milton might be a good fifth round uh, prospect that you might go after if the Patriots are looking for somebody with big upside potential. Personally, I am all for the Patriots getting a QB in this draft class. Again, 
I'm going to point out, I've said in several other videos, that most of the top-rated QBs for the 2025 class are just guys who are rated as day two and day three QBs in this class. Yeah, they might get better next year, but these are the guys that probably just were told, you're not going to be first-round draft picks. So they made the decision to go back to their college, get some more money from NIL, which I don't blame them. They're at least making money that way. And, you know, maybe just by simply coming back next year with a weaker draft class, they're going to be bumped up to a first round or go from a, a fifth round pick to the third or something like that. So next year's draft class, not nearly as good at this point. Yeah, there's some guys like Riley Leonard who transferred to Notre Dame. And um, I think Aller has some potential to show some significant growth next year. But most of the guys that are coming back, over their first few years where you should see most of their development and growth, we're seeing very little. And they really haven't really improved that much from their first year to this past year. So I'm not feeling incredibly bullish about next year's draft class. So for me, I'm all about getting the QB. I, I would love to take one of the top three, but I also have to consider we're getting rid of Mac and we're maybe getting rid of Zappi. There's these other guys that need to be in the pipeline you might have to make a phone call to bring these guys in and see what they can do just to be some insurance. And again, add some depth and help with the roster turnover. Anyway, what do you think about these guys? Do you like any of them? Do you think any of them could be drafted by the Patriots? Do you think they could be UDFA? Do you think they're actually a quarterback or there's something else? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.